Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming an empties for you guys. I actually have quite a bit of stuff because the bag that I've actually got my empties in is from the last year. Like, like Bath and Body Works and I know it's ripping and everything. That's when I decided I definitely need to do an empties video. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you guys like a rundown if I repurchased this product, what I did or I didn't like about it. Um, I do have quite a bit of stuff. I'm definitely going to start trying to do them more often, like maybe every three or four times a year instead of once a year. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because there's quite a bit of stuff. The first is a Batiste Dry Shampoo. I've actually gone through like four of these, but I don't keep all the cans. I actually really, really like Batiste Dry Shampoo. My all-time favorite is the Living Proof one, though. It's so amazing. But this one does a good job for the price. I really like it. I think that it's affordable. And out of all the ones that I've tried, I definitely like this one the best for a more affordable version. Then this is the Marked Anthony Second Day Clear Dry Shampoo. I actually do not like this stuff at all. I say I probably had this for almost two years because it took me so long to get through it because I just do not like it. I almost feel like it makes my hair look more dead. It weighs it down. And I just almost feel like it makes it more greasy instead of soaking up the oil. So overall, I just didn't like that and definitely would not purchase. Next is the Bosha Clear Complexion Cleanser. I really, really like this cleanser. It does a really great job. I feel like keeping like any breakouts or something at bay. I did not notice like a huge improvement of it like clearing my skin because when I was using this, my skin was relatively clear. And then I did notice when I stopped using this, I did start to get some more breakouts. I haven't repurchased it just because I have been trying out so many other cleansers. But this is something that I definitely would recommend and I would repurchase. Now, moving on to... Another hair product, this is the Chi Volume Booster Liquid Body Fine Glaze. Another product this took me forever to get through because I try not to put too much heat on my hair so I'll usually let it air dry. But when I used to use this, I'd spray it, like I said, throughout my hair and then I'd blow dry it. And yes, my hair would look like it had body, but within an hour it was like completely gone. So overall, like I said, at first you see a difference, but like within an hour it was just kind of gone. So I thought that was kind of... Just like, eh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a fan of it. And I think that cheap products are a little bit expensive from what I can remember. Now moving on to some skincare products. The first one is the Clarins Lotion, Toning Lotion. This is actually for normal to dry skin. Um, the wrong one was picked up for me because I asked someone to pick it up. And I guess I should have clarified, but I couldn't tell a difference. But again, I don't have dry skin, but this didn't seem to make me more oily or anything, but overall, I just couldn't tell a huge difference. I probably, like I said, will repurchase the one for oily skin, but not the one for dry skin. And then I went through the Clean and Clear Morning Burst Hydrating Gel Moisturizer. This I have already purchased. I actually have one in my bathroom. I've got another full-size one here, another one over there. I really, really love this, especially for a moisturizer during the day. It doesn't affect the longevity of your makeup. It doesn't like feel heavy. It sinks into the skin really, really fast. And again, this is super affordable. If you haven't tried this out, I would definitely recommend it. It's got like the best smell to it too. Like it reminds me of a candy as a kid, but I can't remember what I can't remember what it is, but I don't know. I just love the smell of it. I love just how, like I said, it sinks in my skin and how it still moisturizes, moisturizes my skin without it looking like greasy or anything like that. So I definitely would recommend trying this out. All right, some more makeup. I'm actually throwing one of these away. There's a little bit left in this one, as you guys can, if you guys can see. But this one is empty. This is the Mac Mineralized Foundation. This is actually in the shade of Light Plus and a Light. Um, this one I did finish up this past summer, as you guys can see, just because it is a little bit darker. I don't hate this product, but I don't like it. I don't think that it's a very good like powder foundation on its own. I feel like it's very sheer. It kind of almost just like mattifies my skin, so I'd wear it on days when I just want to put on sunscreen and then just put this onto my skin. It didn't feel oily and greasy, but overall I just... I didn't like it, and I'm not going to finish the shade light either because I picked up two because I wasn't sure what shade I was. And I'm just going to go ahead and toss it because I never use it, and I just it's just sitting in my collection, so I decided just to toss those. I have some more skin products. This is the Origins Checks and Balances Frothy Face Wash. This is a sample. I finished this forever ago. I've already repurchased it twice. I actually purchased it during the VIB sale again. I absolutely love it. I think that it's an amazing cleanser. It kind of gives you almost like that squeaky clean feeling, but it doesn't feel like it strips your face. So for that reason, I would really recommend it. Again, it's probably one of my all-time favorite face washes. Next is the Body Shop Tea Tree Blemish Fade and Night Lotion. And this is a product that I didn't really feel like did anything for me. I actually did purchase this back when I was having more frequent breakouts. And I honestly just didn't notice anything. And I honestly finished it up, I think, 
did I finish this up last last month or the month before and I just use it every now and then if I have a blemish or something I'll put it on it um, but it's supposed to kind of be like a moisturizer that you put on it comes in a set but I just got this as its own I don't know I just I couldn't tell the difference and I don't really like it next is the Clinique dramatically different moisturizing gel if you're someone who has oily skin this is great they do have a version for dry skin um, so maybe if you have dry skin, you could try this as well. But I absolutely love this. This is probably about my fourth one of these going through because this used to be my all-time favorite moisturizer to put on during the day underneath my makeup because it still moisturized it without it, you know, affecting the wear of my makeup. But since I found the Clean and Clear one, I think that they basically do the exact same thing. But the Clean and Clear one's a lot more affordable. But I do still really like this. Like if you've been wanting to try it out, yes, I would recommend it. But I think the Clean and Clear one still does an amazing job and it's a lot more affordable. The Clean Clear Advantage Acne Spot Treatment. I actually finished this like last December, um, but I think there's better products out there like the Mario, is it Fidescio or something line has like that spot treatment where it's got the pink stuff in the bottom and Kate Somerville has one too. You stick like a Q-tip in. That I think works so much better to clear up because I feel like it really like dries that pimple out, um, but this was just eh and I didn't really like it. Next was another sample. This is the Clarins Gentle Eye Makeup Remover Lotion. I actually really, really like this. I just haven't purchased it because there is other eye makeup removers that I think are more affordable and that I like just as good. But this was really great. I took it with me every time I would travel just to like clean up anything that had fallen, you know, underneath my eyes when I was doing my eye makeup or just to kind of do like a more, you know, like clean up if I blended too far away. This is the last skincare product, I think. This is the Vaseline Spray and Go Moisturizer. I absolutely love this stuff. I'm actually using the one, um, it's got like the oatmeal in it. It's got like the gold one. I prefer this one better, especially in the summertime if you've had like a sunburn or something. This is great as soon as you get out of the shower in the morning to just spray on your body and just, like I said, rub it in. It sinks in really, really fast and that's what I like about it. At nighttime, I would definitely recommend, you know, going for like a body butter or something that's a little bit more moisturizing. But if you're someone that doesn't like the feel of those and you think that they're greasy, I think that just using this and giving your, you know, skin just at least a little bit of moisture would be better than not putting on any at all. But this absorbed really fast. It just, I mean, it's like, I love this. I've gone through so many of these, but again, you should definitely try this out. It's just the Vaseline Spray and Go. And then, like I said, they do have a couple, but this one, um, the Aloe Fresh one, is definitely my favorite. <laughs> All right, I think the rest of this is makeup. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. I finished two of these. They're both in the shade one and two. This is my all-time favorite foundation. I recently started wearing it again. It's not what I have on today. I have the Laura Mercier, what is it, like photo something. It's the one for oily skin, but that's what I have on my skin today. But I absolutely love this foundation. Like I said, I recently started wearing it again, and it just looks so flawless on the skin, but still looks so natural, and that's what I love most about it. Because I had really been stuck on the Urban Decay one, but when I tried this one out, I was like, why did I stop using it? I mean, still to this day, it's my all-time favorite Holy Grail foundation. I have another foundation in here, and this I finished forever ago. This is the MAC Mineralize Satin Finish um, SPF 15. And this was actually um, too, like, oily. It looked a little bit too oily on me. Um, but I didn't finish it all up. There is just a little bit in there. But I'm tossing a lot of my MAC products because I don't really use them much anymore. But... Overall, I think they've even changed the packaging to this, but it was nice because it did come with a pump, which I know the Pro Long Wear, I don't think comes with a pump, or is it the, um, there's another one they have. I can't think of the name of it, but I'm also not a fan of their color selection in the foundations. They see they like a not warm tone or not cool. I feel like it's really hard to find like a one that's more like, you know, neutral. Um, but yeah, like I just wasn't a fan of this for my skin type, but you know, it might work for you. Next is the MAC Prep and Prime Skin Base. This is the original one. I believe they come out with two more, like a more yellow one and like a pinky one, but this is just the original one. This is white and it almost looks like it has like little bits of shimmer in it, but when you apply it to your skin, the shimmer is not on your face. What I love most about this is that when I would put my foundation on top, it looked absolutely beautiful. It wasn't too matte, but again, it didn't like make me look oily or anything, but it still made my skin look a little bit more natural. However, I wore this to a concert and took a picture with a friend and like I had a shirt on that kind of come like this so you could see my arms and like uh, my stu a little bit of my stomach. My face was like completely, completely white and the rest of me was super dark and this was the only thing that I could think of that did it. So I ended up wearing this again at nighttime and just any kind of flash photography, this has probably the worst flashback out of any product that I've ever used. 
So definitely be cautious of that, but I do like it and I would wear it, you know, if I wasn't taking flash photography or something. But I mean, it's not a crap product, but if you're going to be taking for you know flash photography, I'd definitely stay away from this. Then next is a MAC Paint Pot, and this is in the shade Painterly, and as you guys can probably see, yeah, it just, I do have a little bit left, but it's like dried up and crusty. This is great if you're someone who wants something to cover up on your eyelids, because it is a little bit thicker, so it kind of covers up if you've got any veins or anything, or any like discoloration on your lids. This does an amazing job. I do prefer other like primers, because I feel like this is a great base, but it doesn't prolong wear my makeup like my NARS one um, does or my Urban Decay one does. So just for that reason, I actually do have another one in there, but I'm just not going to purchase any, this anymore because I don't really have too much that I feel like I need to conceal on my eyelids. And then I do have two uh, matte concealers. These are the Pro Longwear Concealers. I love this. This used to be one of my Holy Grail concealers. Believe it or not, I finished this up this summer and I just never repurchased it because I feel like now there's so many great co like concealers out there. I do still really like these and would recommend them, but I think that there is better options out there because as you guys can see in these, I cannot get that last little bit out. Um, it just will not pump it up. And also, this packaging breaks so, so easy because it's literally glass. So, but overall, it is a great concealer, but I think that there is better ones out there. Now, I actually have a ton of mascaras, but I'm going to go ahead and get, like, the um, rest of the makeup out of the way. This is the NYX HD Concealer, and one I actually finished this, I think it was last year and this one I finished um, earlier this year there's a huge difference in the shade range I they changed them I don't know if you guys can tell I don't know if you can tell but one is more yellow and then one is got more of like an orangey undertone but this is the one that's a little bit more orangey and when I would put this underneath my eyes it would dry down and look really really orange it's almost like you could see where like my concealer was added it dried so much darker and what sucks is that I've already got two more of these because I because I love this one so much that I purchased a bunch of backups. But it was an amazing concealer, but it doesn't work for me anymore um, just because I am like so fair and I want something brightening. I finished up two primers. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer in Light. I actually just finished up another one the other day, but I'm going to put it in the next empties video. And I've already purchased this. I purchased it during the um, Sephora VIB sale. I love this. It's like my holy grail primer. And yeah, I talk about it all the time. So, next is the Elf Daily Brush Cleaner, and I don't like this for several reasons. One, if you don't keep the actual packaging, I don't know if you guys can see, there is no instructions or anything on here. So yeah, basically you're just supposed to squirt it out on your brush, which is something else I don't like because it's not like a nice mist. It's just like a straight kind of squirt, and I found that it just I wasted a lot of product. But I could have probably dealed with all of that if the smell wasn't so bad. Like even after I've cleansed my brushes, it just like, and they've dried, I can still smell it. And it's a really harsh smell. And when I would go back and like I said, use those brushes, I noticed that I was starting to get some breakouts. But then once I washed them in like my regular cleanser, I didn't have that issue. So I'm wondering if this is maybe what was breaking me out. Oh, okay. Try to hurry up and get, get through all of these. Um, these are two brow products. The first one is a L'Oreal Brow to Styles Definer in Dark Brunette. I have already repurchased this. I love it. It's amazing. This is the NYX one. It's a brow pencil in chocolate. I used this one. I did have more like warmth in my hair. But I like both of these. I prefer, prefer the L'Oreal one because I find that it's just a little bit more creamy and a little bit more long wearing than the NYX one. But if you can't get your hands on one or the other, either one I think is really great. All right. Um, this is actually a product that I'm throwing away. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte uh, Foundation Soft Beige. I've had this forever and they don't have a great color selection so I had to get a ton of different colors and try to um, mix them to get my perfect shade. This sunk into my pores so bad and really made them really noticeable. I just overall I didn't like it. I think I tried to use it four or five times and it's just set in my collection so I decided to just toss it. And I've decided to toss this as well. This is the Essence How to Make Your Face Wow. And first off, I thought the packaging was super cute online, but now it kind of reminds me of kids' makeup. This was come with a bronzer, a highlighter, and two blushes. These bronzer and this highlighter is super chalky. The highlighter lays just on top of your skin and just emphasizes everything. The blushes, believe it or not, actually do have a little bit more of a silky texture, but the, this is not a blush I would ever wear. And this one right here has so much glitter in it that when I put it on my skin and then tried to like blend it, it, the glitter would fall down and the blush just kind of looked patchy. So overall, I just don't like it and I've just decided to toss it. 
All right, now I have seriously like a ton of mascaras. The first one is the L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga. This is the waterproof one. Love the original version. I don't like the waterproof version. I found that I used this like three times and it literally um, dried up. I'm trying to show you guys the wand. But I do really like the original. I just don't like the waterproof. The reason I got the waterproof is because the original one does flake on me. But now I just go over that with a different waterproof mascara. Next is a sample. This is the Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. I love this mascara. Reminds me a little bit of the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, except the formula is just a little bit different. But the wand, as you guys can see, is very similar, which is one of the reasons that I like it. It just, my lashes are so voluminous when I use this. They're not spidery whatsoever. So if you're someone who's looking for volume and length, I definitely check this one out. All right, then I have the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. I've talked about this several times. This is my all-time favorite bottom lash mascara. This has such a little wand. It really gets in close to those lower lash lines and makes them really long. Love this, have already repurchased it. I actually have a backup and I've got one that I'm using now. This is the Clinique Lash Doubling Mascara and then I have the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Mascara. And I'm just kind of showing you guys these together because they're very similar, the wand is. This is um, just one by Clinique. I love wands like this because it makes it really easy to get into that inner corner. And then the Estee Lauder one is the same as well. I have um, already purchased the Clinique one again, but I haven't purchased the Estee Lauder one, but I would. I think that they're both affordable, but they're so similar. And the Cl Clinique one is, I believe, a little bit more less exp is less expensive than the Estee Lauder one, so that's why I repurchased the Clinique one instead. Next is the BH Cosmetics BH Cosmetics Lovable Lash Mascara in True Black. I love BH Cosmetics products, but I absolutely hate this mascara. The first time I got it and I opened it up, the moment I opened the tube, it does have a strong stench to it, and it is like so hard and like gunky on the brush. I like I said, I didn't even try to use it after I opened it that first time. I was just like, I'm throwing this away. I think something was wrong with it or it's just a super dry formula, but I do not like it. This is an EOS lip balm. I do not like these. I find that they are so drying and they're supposed to be moisturizing, but I just don't like them. This was a limited edition one, I think, and yeah, I just, I just don't like it. Real Technique sponge. I know it looks nasty and gross. I already repurchased. I just like to replace those every couple months. Then this is a Hado Lebo. I have no idea how I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but this is an age correcting eye cream. This was okay. I couldn't tell any difference about like the age correcting or anything, which I, you know, don't really need that now. But I mean, it's not like terrible, but I think yeah, there's a lot better eye creams out there. All right, last two items are mascaras. This is the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. I just, I don't like this. I don't like the wand. Um, I think that it's really, really hard to get into your inner corners without this part right here just disposing a lot of mascara. Just like I said, don't like it. And then here's the benefit there, real. I actually don't like this mascara. <laughs> I know a lot of people like it, but I don't like it. I love a lot of benefit products, but this for me just didn't work. I don't like rubberized wands either though, so that could be it, but yeah. This wasn't a huge fan, but anyways, I know this was a super long video because I'm already looking over here and it says 21 minutes, so I'll try to edit it down. But if you guys like these empties videos, just let me know and I'll start kind of doing them every couple of months so the videos aren't so long. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe.